What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2021 Mazda 3, courtesy of Jack Giambalvo Mazda in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so, wanted to check this one out today because this is still one of the few compact cars out there that can be available with all-wheel drive. We actually do have the all-wheel drive variant today because there's snow absolutely everywhere here in Pennsylvania. Not only that, this one has great reliability. You guys can just pick up a Consumer Reports magazine. That'll verify that. And so all in all, I will be going over everything about this one. I'm going to be testing out acceleration, braking, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all of that fun stuff. So what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. So as you can imagine, there are actually several different trim levels for the 2021 Mazda 3. First one being the base sedan, starting at $20,650. Then there is the S sedan, starting at $21,650. Select $22,850 preferred sedan for $24,500. Premium sedan for $27,000 even. And then you have the 2.5 turbo for $30,050. And the 2.5 turbo premium plus for $32,600. That is a ton of different trim levels my goodness and that was just the sedan so a couple other options here if you were to go with the hatchback you will add a thousand dollars to any of those prices with the exception of that base trim level you're actually going to add two thousand dollars if you wanted the base hatchback and then if you wanted to add all-wheel drive those turbo trim levels actually come standard with it but other than that you're going to add fourteen hundred dollars then to any of those prices but as you can imagine with all of those trim levels there are a couple different engine options and the one we have today is a new one for the 2021 model year which i'll get into in a second here but first engine option is a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder this comes with the base trim level only this gives you 155 horsepower 150 pound feet of torque sent to the front wheels through a six speed automatic red line comes in at 6800 rpm with mpgs coming in at 28 in the city 36 then on the highway but then the next engine option is going to belong to the s the select the preferred and the premium trims that is going to be a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder 186 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 186 pound feet of torque available at 4,000 rpm sent to front wheels or all wheels through a six speed automatic red line comes in at 6,500 rpm for that one and mpg numbers coming in at 26 city 35 highway for the front wheel drive 25 in the city 33 on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel once again and then the last engine option belonging to the turbo trim levels and the one we have today i'm quite excited for this one actually 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder 250 horsepower at 5,000 rpm 310 pound feet of torque in this compact car coming in at 2000 rpm that's just wonderful sent to all four wheels through a six speed automatic red line comes in at 6300 rpm zero to 60 approximately 5.9 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 23 in the city 32 highway premium fuel is recommended regular fuel is okay for this engine configuration but you're going to lose some of those power numbers that's a trade-off but Nonetheless, I think it is time now. Let's go ahead and find a straightaway and test out the paddle shifters here first because we do have them and I want to see how quickly they react for us. To put it in full manual shift mode, what you want to do is slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left and that is actually going to display what gear you're in up on those gauges. So that is pretty nice. And now let's go ahead and do that and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here. All right, here we go. bit of a delay it's not the quickest thing in the world but eh, i'm glad they're there you can always use them for engine braking maybe in the snow like we have now when you're going down a hill so you're less inclined to slide off the road but they do have a slight delay to them i will say that but now let's go ahead and give back full control to the moss the three i'm just going to slide the shifter to the right there and yet again let's find a straightaway and let's see how quickly this thing can get us up to speed here we go oh dang this thing is sticking to the road 
<laughs> That's actually kind of cool. I, I kind of really like that acceleration and I kind of knew I would, but because of the all wheel drive system, there was no slippage whatsoever. Even though it's like 27 degrees out is what the car is saying right now. It's super cold with a front wheel drive set up with this thing. You're probably gonna slip a little bit, but with the all wheel drive, there was no slippage. The thing immediately stuck to the ground. That was a very nice acceleration for the Mazda 3. I'll just put it that way. And by the way, I actually did put it in sport driving mode. I think I forgot to mention that. There's a sport driving mode toggle switch thing just to the left of the shifter. That's gonna adjust things like the shift points and the throttle race but it's kind of giving you more power on demand. So that's gonna be there for you as well and certainly give you a better acceleration like I just got there. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.02 inch ventilated front discs for the front wheel drive. It's actually bumped up slightly to 11.6 inch ventilated front disc for the all wheel drive configuration. In the back, you're gonna find 10.43 inch solid rear disc. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at 123 feet. I will say as far as the braking feel goes, that is perfectly fine. There's no brake pedal delay and really 123 feet. That speaks for itself. You're not gonna have any issues with the braking on this thing. As far as suspension and handling goes, up front you're gonna get an independent McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, torsion beam rear axle. As far as ride quality goes, it's actually not bad. I will say it's slightly above average probably, I would say, for this class. Honestly, didn't expect too much because with compact cars, you usually can feel a bit more of the road. And I'll say that's definitely the case here too, but it's not that bad. There's compact cars that are much worse than this. I will say that. As far as steering feel goes, you guys all know, Mazda kills it when it comes to steering feel. Their steering feel is wonderful wonderful definitely points you in the direction that you want to go very easily it's an amazing steering feel that is one thing Mazda is definitely known for and they continue to kill it with every single one of their vehicles even the CX-9 has an amazing steering feel for a three-row SUV but nonetheless as far as cabin noise goes all I'm really getting is the license plate rattling in the back near the window there but other than that cabin noise is really above average as well i will say that not a whole lot of exterior wind noise is coming into the cabin so i absolutely love that visibility is great when you're in the sedan that i have today i do remember though driving the hatchback version of this thing and there is a there's a couple blind spots we'll just put it that way but if you're in the sedan like i am it's absolutely wonderful no issues there rain sensing windshield wipers also coming standard on every single trim level even the base trim level i love that but anyways Head up display, also I am looking at right now, that's wonderful, it's really bright too, which I love. Gives you the speed as well as the speed limit of any given road, that is an available option that we have here today, but it is pretty cool, it helps you better keep your eyes on the road, so that assists with visibility I suppose as well. But, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2021. Mazda 3. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Mazda 3, surrounded by a ton of snow. Welcome to Pennsylvania. Anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Matte black front grille coming with the base, S, and preferred trim levels. However, you will get a gloss black front grille if you were to go with the preferred trim level and up. And with that gloss black front grille, you're actually gonna get a gloss black front lip then as well but one of the best things about the front end at least is led headlights actually come standard on every single trim level across the board giving you extra illumination at night i absolutely love that because so many compact cars most compact cars actually do not give you led on every single trim so i love that also of course they come with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark at night they will turn on automatically for you there that's always nice led daytime running lights also coming standard as well and then if you were to go with the premium trim level and up you will get signature led headlights with an adaptive front lighting system i love that because that essentially means when you're going around the bend at night those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or possum or a squirrel or whatever so that is definitely a very nice feature there but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the Mazda 3. All right so now since we are around side chrome window surrounds do come standard for all trim levels when it comes to those side mirrors they are power adjustable side mirrors for all trims if you were to go with the select trim level and up you will find led integrated turn signals and the preferred and up is actually going to give you memory settings for them as well then take a look down at the wheel setup 16 inch aluminum alloys with the base and the s 18 inch aluminum alloys then coming with the select trim level and up 
That's something else since we are around back on this one. Shark fin antenna body colored up top. You guys can see that just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light for the hatchback, of course. Rear window wiper is going to come standard with any of those hatchback trim levels as well. Gloss black rear spoiler is going to come with the turbo premium that we have today. That is the one and only way you're going to get that rear spoiler if you were to go with the sedan at least. LED tail lights once again coming standard on every single trim level. Well done Mazda once again there. Signature LED LED tail lights coming with the premium trim love line up and just below it all dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips so can't wait to play this one back but anyways I do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so now since we are around back of the Mazda 3, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob. There is also a button by the driver's side left knee, and there is a button on the trunk itself, of course. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 13.2 cubic feet, for the sedan that we have today, 20.1 cubic feet for the hatchback, so quite a substantially bit more for the hatchback. If that was not enough space, either way, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. Did also want to mention, though, there is a cargo cover if you were to go with the hatchback trim level, of course, only. And usually they do come standard with hatchbacks for the most part. But anyways, so now go ahead and make our way to the rear legroom. Comes in at 35.1 inches regardless regardless of if you go with the sedan or the hatchback. So for reference, I mean even six feet tall, this is how much space I have back there. Front seat back map pockets also coming standard back there. There is a rear center armrest with cup holders. If you were to go with the select trim level and up, that is how you're going to go ahead and get that. And all in all, rear seats are plenty comfortable. I will say that, but kind of surprised to see that there were no charging ports since we do have the top trim level of the Mazda 3 here today. Wouldn't have minded seeing a couple USB or at least one USB charging port to keep the rear passengers charged up. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and make our way to the front seats now. Manually adjustable cloth seating with the base and the S trims, leatherette seating coming with the select and then heated front seats coming with the preferred trim level and up. Also wanted to mention the perforated leather coming with the turbo premium. We actually do have that today, so I had to mention that. Eight way power adjustable driver's seat with power lumbar coming with the preferred trim level and up. And that comes with memory settings actually with the preferred and up as well. And seats are plenty comfortable, I will say that. We do have the power lumbar adjustments as well. So really you shouldn't have any issues finding your perfect driving position in this thing. And it actually gets better with the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping, of course, but it telescopes out quite a bit. So I love that. Being a taller guy, it's important that the steering wheel telescopes out a decent amount. But leather wrap steering wheel coming with the select trim level and up. And if you were to go with one of the turbo trims, you will get a heated steering wheel, which I'm loving on this cold day in Pennsylvania. So that is pretty darn cool as well. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. You do have your Mazda logo on the one side and nothing on the other side because all of your buttons are on the side of the key pretty cool lock unlock the button to pop the rear hatch of course and it is all keyless entry with the push button start for every single trim level across the board so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there it's up and then once started up tachometer is all the way to your left speedometer is front and center and then of course you got your engine temp and fuel information all the way to your right then and so within this speedometer front and center there is a couple different things you can actually scroll through and different setups actually as well it is actually all digital so you can choose to display a traditional speedometer there's also a setup where you can have a digital speedometer displayed up there if you wanted to it's also going to be your average miles per gallon at any given time it's going to tell you if you're in that sport driving mode up there as well and overall also how many miles you have left until you hit empty then as well so pretty much everything you could possibly need up there then make our way to overall interior quality power moonroof coming with the preferred trim level and up dual zone climate control for the select trim level and up you will also get a frameless rear view mirror with home link controls which i'm loving that's for the turbo trim levels either one of the turbo trims i'll get that so that's pretty cool overhead sunglass holder coming with the preferred trim level and up 
I love this like dark brown contrast stitching, I will say that. Running through the black leather just up top of the air vents here, that's a pretty cool look and it is a soft leather. And that actually continues onto the doors then as well. And I like the silver finish to the passenger side glove box, that's a nice touch there as well. Just in front of the shifter, you have a USB charging port. There's a decent amount of storage, probably for your cell phone, I'm guessing. Then there's two cup holders just in front of the shifter as well. Just behind that, you have your circular dial and buttons for the infotainment, which we'll get to in a second here. Also an electromechanical parking brake. There's a little more storage just behind all of that, including a 12 volt power outlet, USB charging port once again. And there's a little cargo divide system within the center armrest, which is pretty cool too. But overall, interior quality is always really nice with Mazda. We'll say that. Wouldn't have minded a different color leather other than black that we have today. But overall, it is a bunch of soft touch material. I like the gloss black finish around the shifter. A lot of manufacturers will do like a, a matte gray, which is kind of cheapy looking. But overall, interior quality is plenty fine for the Mazda 3. But now, like I said, let's take a look at the infotainment screen here. 8.8 inch color infotainment display it is not touchscreen the way you control what is on there is the circular dial and buttons like i was mentioning so having said that it is super easy to use and it would be a stretch for a touchscreen anyway so it's probably better that it's all set up back here but it does of course come with bluetooth and audio streaming android auto apple carplay if you go with the s trim level and up so let me reiterate that Android Auto Apple CarPlay does not come on the base trim level, unfortunately. So I wanted to mention that to you guys. Factory navigation system is going to be available. We do happen to have it today. That is pretty darn cool. Can of course also check out some driving statistics up there if you wanted to, and of course your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. Eight speaker sound system is going to come with the base, S, select, and preferred trim levels. And then if you were to go with the premium trim level and up, that is going to give you a 12 speaker Bose sound system. So I think you guys know we got that one today. We do have the Bose sound system. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> It's like you get a little massaging seats there with the bass on that Bose sound system. It really was quite nice, especially the bass. Really more than enough of a sound system for the size of the Mazda 3, I will say that. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the Mazda 3 in reverse, of course, we'll find a rear view camera for every single trim level. But if you were to go with the Turbo Premium, you also, in addition to that, get a 360 degree monitor. And all of these cameras are insanely high quality. Typically, I don't find the the quality of the cameras that I'm looking at right now. So that is pretty cool too. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, first thing I wanted to mention when it comes to the Mazda 3, this is an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. So that pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. It usually doesn't come standard on other manufacturers. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also standard for every single trim level. It will include lane departure warning, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, driver attention alert system, automatic high beams which is super convenient at night i will say that premium trim level in addition to that is going to add traffic sign recognition and if you were to go with the select trim level and up you will also get a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert as well and so when it comes to my final thoughts here of the mazda 3 love the turbo engine option it really is quite nice i love that i got it here today love the all-wheel drive system availability especially living here in pennsylvania i feel like most of the roads are completely covered in snow right now i just got lucky with these so that's pretty cool iihs top safety pick plus is the very best safety rating you can get so gotta appreciate that great steering feel mazda is always known for that and this is certainly no exception so if you enjoy driving dynamics this really is a very good pick for a compact car also very good interior quality, I will say that. Excellent sound system. The really only constructive criticism I can really possibly think of in the Mazda 3, and this pretty much says it all right here, it's just the blind spots for the hatchback because I remember driving that and there was some blind spots, but if you get the sedan, I don't got any constructive criticism, I will say that, but... Anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Mazda 3 in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on TikTok at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, 
that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.